In the two and a half years of the war against Ukraine, the Russian army has turned into a criminal group. The armed forces have been disintegrated. Russian Z War correspondent and propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov spoke about this. He particularly harshly criticized the command of the Russian armed forces and the officer corps, who consider ordinary soldiers slaves and can even send them to execution. The guys are afraid to talk on camera. Why? I encountered the fact that they are afraid of zeroing out. One told me, I can't talk because then the commander will send me into an attack with one sapper shovel. The criminalization of the command staff has occurred. The army is simply disintegrating, rapidly disintegrating. There is practically no military justice. They have turned into slave owners, Kalashnikov said. He also mentioned cases of looting by Russian soldiers and an acute shortage of manpower. There is a severe shortage of people. For the first time, I saw a regiment of the strategic missile forces, missile men recruited into the infantry. It is obvious that they are already scraping the bottom of the barrel. I look at our armed forces and this is some kind of monstrous degradation. All that bravura that we are the second force in the world. Damn, behind this virtual picture, there has been a rollback. I will tell you that tactical nuclear weapons will not save. Troops are so rarely stationed. The fields are littered with mines and other things placed remotely. Well, they will strike with tactics, some 10 kilotons, and they will not even destroy companies. And no one will go for a massive use of tactical nuclear weapons. They were unable to carry out a quick blitzkrieg. And a protracted war is always terrible and unprofitable. It destroys a nation. Well, now a crisis is inevitable, complained the Z-War correspondent. He says North Korean soldiers arriving in Russia will be useless on the battlefield. Russians should not place great hopes on them. He believes that the use of North Korean troops in the war is a bluff. I understand what our government is trying to portray. I will not go to a new mobilization. I'd rather hire Koreans. It's a bluff. Of course, Moscow can send Pyongyang several tons of grain for this. Oil products. To replace the mobilization, you need at least 100,000 to create strike forces and break through the front. And then you start thinking, they haven't had combat experience for 70 years. Yes, they have polished, ironed uniforms, they march beautifully, but they cannot be mixed with our veterans. They do not understand Russian. So, they need to be gathered into separate Korean units. These units are unseasoned, inexperienced. They will become a weak point of defense. The Ukrainian armed forces can strike there. They are also fighting in a foreign country. The motivation is not right. And how can we organize interaction with our units, given that the Korean officers do not know Russian either? Kalashnikov said. There was a drone attack on Russia's Voronezh region on the night of October 28. This was reported by Russian telegram channels. An explosion and fire occurred as a result of an attack by Ukrainian kamikaze drones on the ethanol spurt distillery. As a result of the fire, the plant's building was seriously damaged, and one of the barrels in which the alcohol was stored was burnt out. At the same time, two nearby residential houses and a farm building were also damaged. It is said that at least one person was injured as a result of the incident. The ethanol spurt plant was attacked by Ukrainian drones on October 22. As a result, an explosion and fire occurred. It should be noted that distilleries in Russia are also used to meet military needs. These plants produce fuel and explosives for military equipment. The Russian Ministry of Defense announced that 10 Ukrainian drones were shot down over the Voronezh region. Russian state TV released footage Saturday of what they said were Russian sappers searching for and detonating mines in the Kursk region. According to the video story the sappers worked on the territory from where Ukrainian forces have retreated. In Russia, 
Air Defense brought down 17 Ukrainian drones over four regions near the border, the Defense Ministry in Moscow reported Saturday. Also according to the Russian Defense Ministry, Moscow's troops have continued eking out battlefield gains in Ukraine's industrial east, capturing the hamlet of Oleksandropil in the Donetsk region. Russia has been conducting a ferocious months-long campaign along the eastern front in Ukraine, gradually compelling Kiev to surrender ground, but Russian forces have struggled to push Ukrainian forces out of its Kursk border region, following an incursion almost three months ago. Чаще всего это кассетные боеприпасы, типа ПФН, типа колокольчиков. Желательно ликвидировать такие боеприпасы на месте, но его возможно и обезвредить. Чаще всего они без самоликвидатора лежат на замаскированной в траве. Три. Вот вчера в середине мы там все прошли. Основная задача наша – это обезопасить освобожденные территории как бы для мирного населения. То есть мы идем, да, мы следуем, мы идем следом за штурмовыми подразделениями, обезрежем те, те подарки, те сюрпризы, которые нам оставил враг. Это ямку ложит мину ловушку. Также ее взводит и на и на эту мину ловушку накладывается еще одна э, мина. В случае, если поднять эту поменку, грубо говоря, то сработает мина ловушка и получается двойной заряд. Ну, то есть двойной ущерб, двойную вещь человеку. Поэтому все мины уничтожаются на месте накладным зарядом. By October 28, 5,000 North Korean soldiers are set to be deployed to the Kursk region. These are likely troops from the so-called elite unit, according to the New York Times. On October 23, the first North Korean troops arrived in the Kursk region, with thousands more arriving each day since. Informed sources in Ukraine stated that by October 28, around 5,000 North Korean troops will be gathered in the Kursk region. According to the source, the troops are part of an elite unit of the Korean People's Army. They are being transported from Vladivostok on large Ilyushin IL-76 transport planes to a military airfield in western Russia and then taken to the combat zone. Currently, North Korean troops are concentrated only in the Kursk region. It is noted that the North Korean soldiers have not yet engaged in combat. It remains unclear what role they will play on the front lines. The NYT adds that it is uncertain how the North Korean military will affect the dynamics on the battlefield. North Korean forces have not participated in any war since the 1950s, raising questions about the capabilities of even their elite units. North Korea has sent troops to Russian territory. Intelligence reports indicate they have undergone training at four training grounds. The reported number of North Korean troops varies. Western intelligence and South Korea estimate about 3,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia. Ukrainian intelligence claims that North Korea has sent around 12,000 troops to Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the first North Korean soldiers would arrive in the combat zone on October 27-28.